Mark, how frustrating was it on Saturday when your game's called off? Eh, well, you know, I, I tend to kind of be relaxed about these sort of things, you know, what will be will be, it gave me a chance to go and watch Dundee United, um, you know, they played Kilmarnock on Saturday, I hadn't seen them, I now have, so, you know, that was a bonus. Um, I, 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 you know, I, I didn't really think about it in those terms. I mean, I, I came to terms with it the, 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 on Friday night that the game would probably be off. I mean, I drove past Firhill, uh, coming back from my mum and dad's on Friday night around tea time uh, through Mary Hill. And, oh my God, it was like a tempest. You know, it was ridiculous. So at that point, I kind of thought the game would be off. So you know, I started preparing my mind for that. So more of a help. Kind of thing. Yeah, well, you've got to accentuate the positive, and that's what we did. You know, we gave the boys. Didn't, we couldn't really train because we couldn't get anywhere to train. You know, we had no. You know, we had a training ground that was available to us twenty four hours, seven days a week, and it was, uh, you know, all weather. And that we'd have had them in on Saturday, but you know, the, the sort of areas that we used were already booked out and were getting used, and we couldn't get them at such short notice. So we just gave the weekend off, allowed the boys to go and do a bit of Christmas shopping. <laughs> And uh, they'll make it up to us in other ways, I hope, you know. So when you look this, this way then, call us, you're a fan of the winter break coming back? You know, I had a winter break when I was a player in Hamburg. And, uh, you know, I remember that we finished uh, playing on the the um, the 10th of December. It was the last game I played a game against... Um, uh, Inter Milan in a European game in the San Siro and that was the last game we played until we were supposed to play on the 1st of February and we trained uh, in January to start the preparation and about the middle of January the worst snow they'd had in 20 years in Hamburg and we had to go away to Israel to do that tra training and when we came back the games were off for three weeks you know, so I just that's my worry that you can't time um, you know, the deluge that came on Friday night, you can't you can say that that will come in, you know, the last week in January and that after having a three week break you'll have another three week break, so the, the idea is good, sound, but I just don't know how you work the timing. Is that, is that the problem, it's just that if we're going to play 12 much rounds, we effectively are now that you're just going to have to deal with you know, there's going to be one weather problems at certain points and, and just deal with it. Yeah, that's what I think, you know. I think that's right, you know. And I think that we're talking outside about the whole thing about now uh, everyone has to change their mentality. It's no longer a game that when I was a player, you know, you finished on the... You know, I used to always finish cup final day, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, you were off for six weeks, you know. You were off for six weeks, but it's not like that now. You know, the players have to realise. And I have, as we talked about outside... Um, I heard you know senior uh, top players. You know, I've heard Chelsea guys talking about the fact. Um, I'm, I'm trying to think who it was in particular. I heard talking about. I think it was um, uh, Mata or somebody like that when he was there. Uh, talking about the fact that they consider themselves. You know, it's a year-round thing. It's not something that stops. They don't think that way. They think just the footballers, and that's what they do. You know. Is, is the subject to what about? Should we not be looking as much as trying to give pitches a rest and you know stray away from bad weather? It's more of giving guys a break, a, a chance to rest, a, a, the busiest part of the season, refreshing for the second half of the season. Is that is that a better way of looking at it? Um, you know, I, all of that, those things work. You know, but I don't know how necessary. You see, I, 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 from my point of view. The, 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 the focus on any winter break should be about the supporters. What do the supporters want? When do, when do they need a break? You know, um, when is it going to be commercially viable for us to, you know, in terms of looking after the supporters but still looking after their own interests, when is it going to be the best time to have a break? No, when the players need a rest or when the pitches need a rest. We can deal with all that, you know. That's what, that's what we do, you know. But if there's a winter break, I think that it, it, it should be about, you know, punters standing in the freezing cold or sitting in the freezing cold or encouraging families to come along and, you know, parents thinking, well, I'm not taking my kid along to a game when it's dangerous in the roads or it's, you know, minus 10 outside and we've managed to get the game on. You know, it's it's, it's not the thing. I think it has to be about the supporters. Besides the, the, the one at break, what do you make of the, the other changes to the, 
to the League Cup, the, the bonus point, the, the group stages, what are your thoughts on that? I think it's all in, necessary, you know, change. I think that we have to, you know, find a better model. I think we have to make it more attractive for the fans. I think we have to make it more interesting and I think anything like this is worth worth trying. There's, there's more games though for, for a team like Motherwell. For a lower league team there's an appeal to obviously having more games but for a, a top flight side for Motherwell is that some is that something you could do without? Well not really because you know I've I've always um, as a player I hated playing pre season friendlies. You know, there was times when, you know, even at Aberdeen I, I felt like he wouldn't even play me. You know, because I was pretty inert and I had a license to hurt people. I didn't really want to play in games, you know, and uh, friendlies weren't like that, you know, so I just didn't, couldn't get up for friendlies, you know. So, um, you know, the fact is that these games will now creep into a part of the season where we'll need to sort of get ready early and they'll help us get ready for, you know, a, a higher level of competition that uh, we'll, we'll meet in the, in the league. Would you, would you envision yourself playing less friendlies then at the start of the season? Yeah. Use this as your, as your pre-season effect? Not, not, not disrespectfully use it as pre-season, but I think, you know, we're going to have to get ready quicker in, 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 in other ways, you know, and I think that um, it, won't, it won't necessarily be about, you know, playing a lot of games. You know, I've often thought, and we've spoken about this recently as well, um, that I've been tempted to go away for pre-season and not play any games when I'm going away in tour to use it as an intensive period to get the players fit and to get them sharp and to, to do the things that you want to do in the training ground because quite often when you're away in pre-season and you go to Germany or you go to Austria for 10 or 11 days and you have three games then you have to tone down the training because you're playing these games because the players get too tired instead of that you know you can really work in the training ground you can get their fitness up to a really high level if, you've no, if it's no point punctuated by unnecessary friendly games. Liz Hutchinson said he wasn't aware of the, the changes that were being implemented in the league up until news broke. Was that the same for yourself? Were you kind of kept in the dark a little bit about that? I wasn't kept in the dark. I mean, I knew, you know, in part of anything else, you know, I'm privy, you know, I go in, I was in the offices of the SFA, you know, I have a, a pass that gets me in there. So I'm quite, you know, privileged in the sense that, you know, I can come and go through there as well. So I kind of Trojan horse going in there. But... <laughs> bringing information out but you know it's um it's it's it didn't matter you know at the end of the day i knew there was changes coming and uh i'm excited by the changes to see how it's going to affect everybody you say it doesn't matter though but is communication maybe still an issue then i mean if there's two um chair people of spfl clubs that don't know about the changes until it's the news is broken is, is that an issue i don't think it's an issue i think les needs to move nearer you know, I think, you know, less is people here who he relies on to really have that information. You know, Alan, for instance, you know, myself, I don't think that's an issue, no. Dundee, on Saturday? Yeah. I think they haven't won since the start of October. Is that the, are these the games that you really need to be winning, given... You know, we need to win every game, uh, you know, and we can afford to no win every game. You know, at the end of the day, you know, we're going to have to win enough points to try and get us out this second bottom spot and uh, certainly avoid being bottom. So um, every game's important to us. Um, I saw Dundee play St Johnston last week and the Friday night game I went to that and both teams were decent. You know, Dundee are physically strong, they're competitive, they've got a lot of energy, they've got good players, dangerous players up front and they've got, you know, experienced defenders at the back and uh, uh, there'll be a difficult opposition for us, you know, but, you know, on our day we proved, you know, hearts again that on our day we are no bad. So it can be a really good game. How do you rate the three up front, Boy, Hemmings and Stuart? How, how do you think I think they're as good as just about anybody, maybe outside of Celtic in the, in the division. You know, I think that the two boys have a mixture of, you know, different enough. Um, and of course with Stuart, you know, they've got pace and, you know, and ability. Um, so, you know, I think, that, I think that's a strong part of their team. You know, I think what we have to do is make sure that we, going the other way, are better in attack than they are and, uh, and try and win by, at least by the odd goal. Who's in? Who's out? The team. I've not told them that, so I'm not <laughs> going to tell you. Doesn't tell the squad who's in. The no, everybody's fit. I think, isn't they? Joe. Ah, Joe's still out, but everybody that's fit is fit. Yeah.